Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Jonah Rafael, and I've attended Hockey U Learning Center for four years now. And I'm doing my senior project on welding. So during this project, I'll be, or presentation, I'll be going over why I wanted to do my project on welding, welding in general, different types of welding, the pros and cons, the many job requirements, the basic tools and equipment that all welders need to use, my community service, my work cited, and advice to underclassmen, mahalos, and any questions at the end. So the reason that I chose to do my project on welding was because of the love and support of my family. Most of my family members, like my dad, uncle, neighbor, they're all welders. So this gave me an idea that maybe welding is a career that I should look more into and I should do my project on. And sure enough, it was the best choice for me. I really enjoy welding and I really hope that I could get a career into welding or as a welder. Jonah. Can you put the chain inside, Joshua? Yeah, there we go. The benefits are also right. what's driven me into <laughs> welding. You gain a lot of knowledge and experience, and depending on the job that you have, you get paid a very good amount of money. So it makes up for all that hard work and sweat that you got to put in every day. And in a few years, the welding industry will see a shortage of water, so many employers are going to provide more job opportunities for young students. And for me, I see it as an opportunity to provide for my family. So starting off is the process. Welding is a process that joins two or more metals together using extreme heat, pressure, and sometimes both to join the two metals together or bond them together, which today we use to create 50% of our man-made products, like computers, medical, de medical devices, cell phones, bridges, ships, oil rigs, and houses. You'll also see welding being implemented in aerospace, military, automotive industries, shipbuilding, construction, and many more. You could also see some historical structures that use welding, like the Empire State Building, St. Louis Gateway Art, Walt Disney Concert Hall, and many more. The different types. So in the welding industry, there's many different types of welding, but I'll be talking about arc welding. Arc welding is one of seven fusion processes that use an electrical power source to create an arc between an electrode and the base metal. In arc welding, you have six different methods, but I'll be talking about three that I think are the most common. And in this picture, it pretty much shows you a general understanding of arc welding. You have your electrode, which is used to form or create an arc between the base metal and the electrode. You have your the arc which creates the intense heat in order to melt the two metals together. And as you as you drag your electrode around along the base metal, you're you're also creating a molten pool that you drag along and it pretty much melts and then solidifies and that's what joins the two metals together. First off, I'll be talking about shielded metal arc welding, or other known as small. In 1890, Charles L. Coffin was awarded the first U.S. patent for an arc welding procedure using a metal electrode or rod. This procedure uses a power supply to provide current to the electrode and the base metal, which is needed in order to create an arc. To start the arc, electrode needs to strike the base metal, then pull it back, which creates a gap. This allows the current to then travel across the gap, creating an arc. This arc is what creates that intense heat in order to melt and join the two metals together. Today, you'll see this procedure in construction, shipbuilding, automotive industries, and even industrial fabrication. Second off is metal inert gas, or also known as MIG. In 1948, Batelli Memorial Institute developed a procedure called gas metal arc welding, or some people like to call it today metal inner gas. MIG welding is a similar process to stick welding, but instead of a rod, they use a wire electrode that is either fed through a welding gun. This process also uses a mixture of different gases like argon, CO2, helium, and oxygen, and uses it as a shooting gas. The shooting gas also travels 
through the welding gun or the nozzle that goes into your well pool to pre protect it from any contaminations in the atmosphere that might damage or weaken your weld. Today, MIG is co used commonly in automotive industries, construction industries, and any high production manufacturing companies. So last is tungsten inert gas, or also known as TIG. In 1941, Russell Meredith invented TIG welding. TIG is a process that uses a tungsten electrode that provides current. This creates the arc between the workpiece and the tungsten electrode. This electrode does not melt into the metal, but rather just maintains the arc. This process takes a lot of practice to master because you also have to hand feed it the rod to, to the world as you go. This shields the world from any contaminations in the atmosphere, like I said, and also prevents rust. And in the 1900s, TIG welding was used a lot to create aircraft pilots for the military during World War II. So if you ever think of welding as a career, you really have to look at the pros and cons. As a welder, you make a lot of money. In Hawaii, an average hourly wage can range from anywhere between $18 to $30 an hour. And yearly wage can go from $38,000 to $81,000. And this is just for an average welder. If you look at underwater welders, they can make over 100000 a year. So you get a good amount of money as a welder. Welding is also going to be a very demanding trade in the next couple of years because of the expected shortage of 300,000 welders by 2020. So it's a trade that's really going to attract people that need jobs in the upcoming years. This is great because many more students will be driven into going a into a trade that's going to be needed in the upcoming years. Another pro that welding can offer is traveling. Shipbuilding welders have, to have the opportunities to travel to different cities or ports to repair ships or even make ships. The military hire, hire welders to travel all around the world to different bases and facilities to work on any mil military projects that need to be done. And last is your career advancement. Welding is a job that provides so much opportunities to hire your education. You can go from a basic welder to a career as a welding inspector or even a welding engineer. So you have a lot of options and choices. But welding also has its cons. There's many hazards that you experience, like fires, electric shock, harmful gases, any or heavy objects, and hours. Most welders work 70 hours a week, and this ain't even counting the hours of overtime. And some jobs will have a specific time or date that that project needs to be finished. So even more that you have to work more if you're falling behind. And the last con is health risk. As a welder, you're putting your health at risk if you don't take the right safety precautions. Welders have to lift heavy objects or material that could injure yourself or others. And you also expose your body to harmful gases, which later on can have negative effects on your body. Schooling and jobs. The good thing about looking into a welding career is that you don't need to have a college degree or a master's degree to get a welding job. Most times, employers will look for, for welders that have experience or students that have completed a welding program or welding school, like a vocational school, technical school, or even a trade school. Not only that, but it's also way cheaper than going to a university or any college to, to try and get your degree. And it's also less time consuming. And the reason I say this is because most times vocational schools technical schools or welding <laughs> programs can take as little as seven months to complete. And the good thing about the programs, the training programs, is that they prepare you for an entry-level welding test. This will determine what job you work best at and we'll see what jobs are best for you and they'll provide the job opportunity that you work best at. But you could always go for your associate's degree and after you complete your welding program, you could also go for a higher and more advanced education, which could help you become a welding inspector or welding engineer. Most times, most times, employers will have different job requirements, but it all depends on that employer. Not all of the job requirements are the same, so you just gotta play it out. 
And after high school, I plan on going to Honolulu Community College to take a watering technology class or program where I'll learn the different skills and standards that are required for all waters. So over here is just the basic tools and equipment that all welders should use. You have your angle grinders, which is used to clean and prep your material from any oil, paint, rust. You could also use it to sand or cut your material. You have your wire brushes, which is used to whack off any dust or any, or any slag that's chipped off using your chipping hammer, which you also use to chip off any slag that, that's after on the wall that solidifies. You have your framing squares, which is, well, you could use this to measure, but also to pretty much make sure that your measurement is right and that it's not crooked or it's not straight. So you use that. You have your ground clamps right here, which is used to pretty much hold down your material or metal when you weld so it doesn't move. You, you have your magnet positioners, which is used to pretty much hold your metal to, so it's also a good tool to use. And then you have your protective gear. You have your helmet, which is used to, you, need, you always need to wear this because the arc that I was talking about creates intense heat, or not intense heat, but in, intense light that could blind you, so this auto darkens it when, when it sees intense light. You also have your welding jacket. Well, it's a leather jacket. You all, you could use uh, leather or wool, but leather is good because the thickness of the material, it prevents it from melting through your, your fabric. So it's also a good tool to use leather. You have your heavy duty gloves, which is used because your arms or your hands are right next to the arc when you weld. So this protects you from the heat. And then you have your respirator mask, which is very important because it prevents that harmful gases to go into your body. So, and your tape measure. This is, you could use this to measure, measure the thickness of your metal. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is my work site. This is where I got all my research and notes. But all of, all of these, I would have to say the history of watering was the best because it taught me the different dates and times of, of each specific procedure that was done. And it even shows the more advanced procedures today. For my community service, I decided to weld shoe wraps for my school. As you can see, there's one right there. I worked with my dad during the 50 hours of my community service at my house where he built the shoe racks out of mild steel using a MIG welder. We also cleaned and painted them. During the community service, I learned so much from my dad, from small stuff like how to cut and measure the material to actually being able to weld. It was a really good experience for me, and it was a great way for me to spend more time with my dad. So during, during this project, there was a lot of ups and downs. I really struggled during this project because I got distracted a lot and I really didn't focus on my project. And that really affected my hours that I needed and in general, just my whole project. But there was also a lot of ups. I got to weld for my first time and I also learned a lot about welding with the help of my dad. But the best part was making the shoe racks for the school, which was a great experience for me. So all in all, I really had a good time during this project and I'm happy that I chose to do it on welding. My advice to underclassmen would have to be log time daily. I would also tell them to stay focused and not get distracted with any video games or anything that will distract you from doing your work. I'd like to thank my mom and dad for always making sure that I do my work and I'm not fooling around. I'd like to thank my dad for also being my mentor throughout this project. My Puna and Papa for always making sure that I have a ride from or to and from school every day. I'd like to thank Kumaniki for making sure that I'm always on task and I'm able to graduate this year. Ati Tatum for always motivating me to do good in school and to never give up. Kumu Kat for helping me a lot on my research paper. Without her, I probably wouldn't have gotten it done. 
and Steven for introducing me to welding and letting me weld at his house for the first time and my friends for just always being there for me. Thank you.